What on earth is that? I made burn ins. See? You're you're joking, right? No. Why? You're not actually supposed to burn them, bro. What did you do? I cooked them until they were burnt. Oh, my goodness. Wait, was that the last half of pork belly from the freezer? Uh, yeah. I was gonna make a video with that. Looks like you're gonna have to make one with this then. Well, I've just got to take this and run with it. So I screwed up this batch of pork belly burn-ins. I'll get to how and why and how you can learn from me. But yeah, normally I would redo this and film the second iteration to show you the final product. But for me in my situation, this is a little too much of a commitment for me to redo. Smoking is no small task for me and it's a huge schedule commitment, which is kind of how I ended up here anyway. And I had been trying to get rid of this pork belly in my freezer for months. So yeah, I'm not redoing it. I also think I know how to do this correctly and I can properly guide you to a final product that you'll enjoy. So let's get started. You could probably do this with a whole pork belly, like five to six pounds. In fact, I would recommend that, but I only had a half of one in my freezer, so that's what I'm going with. I'm just slicing this into two inch cubes. I think anything between one and two inches is fine. And for the first time in my life, I'm not gonna dry brine something that I'm smoking. And the main reason for that is because this is by far the smallest things that I'm smoking. So internal seasoning is not gonna do a whole lot for us. So with that, I'll start with the most traditional binder, which is just regular yellow mustard. You got any mustard? Get that evenly coated all around the chunks and then we're going to add our rub. I make this slightly different almost every time, but I'm going to do this pretty similar to the pork butt that I smoked last year. In fact, I'm starting with the leftover rub from that. Maybe about two teaspoons of everything, starting with some freshly ground black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, celery salt, slightly more of smoked paprika, maybe a tablespoon, and slightly less of cayenne pepper, maybe a teaspoon. I finish with a tablespoon or two of dark brown sugar and mix this all together. I spread that evenly over the pork belly in a couple of iterations to make sure it's evenly coated. And that's pretty much all you have to do for these. This is probably the easiest thing that I've smoked aside from the fact that I almost ruined them. I'm spreading them evenly on an oven rack, just make sure it's flame resistant. I like to go fat side up so the fat can melt down and baste the pork belly bites. And in the meantime, I was getting my Big Joe charcoal smoker ready. I cleaned out from the last cook and since this is a low and slow smoking process, I'm going to add charcoal briquettes. I used to always get things started with my chimney, but now I have a new method, the boil. It only takes a few minutes of blasting all the charcoals and they'll get lit. Who else is trying to get lit, y'all? For smoking wood, I'm just adding a few chunks of hickory wood, which is my go-to, and then I just have some apple chips that I'm sprinkling on top as well. But I close that empty to heat up for about 10 minutes just so the heat can soak into the top of the dome. And then I build my standard double indirect cooking setup. Two heat deflectors, the X accessory rack, my pizza stone, and then a drip tray, and then my two cooking racks. I close that again and try to regulate this down to about 250 Fahrenheit for smoking. So I take the bottom and top vents from fully open to almost all the way closed. And within about 10 more minutes, this started to settle around 275, which was fine. I just closed things up a bit more to get it down closer to 250 because I was going to be leaving this for a few hours. At that point, I loaded my pork rack onto the cooking racks and closed up. I tried my best to trust my vent placements to leave this sitting for 4 hours unattended. This would have been much easier if I had a self-regulating smoker that I could set a precise temperature and leave it. But anyway, I came back 4 hours later and checked my temperature. And to my demise, it had jumped all the way to 330 Fahrenheit. I was dreading what I was going to see when I opened this lid and... Those are some burnt fellows. You said it. Obviously killed these guys with too much heat over too much time. What you should do is leave these sitting at 250 to 275 Fahrenheit until they're tender. I think that would have taken like 3 to 4 hours maybe. But if you're there to tend to the grill, then you can tell when the temperature is climbing and you can take care of it. I just never have that many hours unattended at home that I can sit and do this, unfortunately. But to carry on, I just want to finish the process just so you know what to do. I would remove these and get them into another catering tray. And then to finish them off, I like to add some barbecue sauce and butter. And of course, I made my own barbecue sauce. Same recipe as what I made in my ribs video last year, but I'll take you through it. Into a small sauce pot, I'm adding one and a half cups of ketchup, two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and then four tablespoons of brown sugar. In my case, I have these pucks of palm sugar to get rid of, and they're conveniently about four tablespoons worth. One or two extra tablespoons of molasses, a teaspoon of W sauce, and two teaspoons of any kind of mustard. I'm using Dijon. Salt and pepper to taste, and then if you have some extra barbecue rub, another handful of that. Then I finish with a tablespoon or so of hot sauce, and then a couple teaspoons of soy sauce. Finally, a quarter cup of water to allow this to reduce down and cook together. I just whisk that occasionally over medium heat until it's thickened to my liking. 
I usually let this simmer for like 30 to 45 minutes and then I let it cool and add it to a squeeze bottle. You can make this a more tangy sauce with more vinegar, a spicier sauce with more hot sauce, a sweeter sauce with more sugar, etc. I'd say this is a pretty balanced barbecue sauce, which is just how I like mine. But when the burn ends are ready, we can add the barbecue sauce to those and toss them together. I'm just adding a few tablespoons of butter for added richness. I also poured back in some of the rendered fat that these let out because they rendered out too much. Just wanted to see if that would help out any. What this is supposed to do at the final stage of smoking is just get a nice glaze on each of the bites. It'll kind of candy these and make them that much more addictive. So I cover them in foil because I don't want the bark to cook anymore, obviously for mine. I just put those back on the smoker at 275, you could raise this to like 300 and be fine. I just give them like 45 minutes and then pull them out. And that's all you have to do, there's no extra resting for this because these are so small anyway. Just serve them with extra barbecue sauce and these are a nice snack to have with whatever other barbecue you're having. And obviously I majorly, majorly screwed up, but that's just because I miscalculated my ability to set this and leave it for a few hours. Most people aren't that dumb to do this in the first place, at least not with an automatic smoker. But I'm confident if you follow my steps properly, then these are going to come out amazing. This is not the kind of thing that I want to run to the store and waste another day to make again, so this is all I'm going to have, unfortunately. Let's get to the cancer test. I mean taste test. Yeah, this is kind of funny. There's a few solutions here. One is just to be better at gauging the temperature on my charcoal smoker, but two is to get a set and forget kind of smoker that regulates itself to set to a certain temperature. And three is to have a less busy schedule to be able to tend to something like this. But didn't do any of those today and ended up with this. Just too much work and material to waste making a video, so I hope I didn't waste your time. Nice. I'm still gonna taste test these things because I don't wanna waste them. Cheers. All right, hear me out. I'm not gonna try to swindle you. These are not pleasant, but they're not terrible. So the inside retained a little bit of its pork ability. <sighs> Just covered my shirt in barbecue sauce. Awesome. While yes, most of the flavor has been burned and turned bitter, it still retained a little bit of juice. I don't know if adding the butter and fat back into the pan helped that at the last stage. The barbecue sauce is excellent as expected, but I wouldn't give these to anybody because again, they're not pleasant. I mean, I've never had pork belly burn-ins, but I've had brisket burn-ins before, and they're absolutely amazing. And whether you trust me or not, I know this process would absolutely work if the temperature was right, but I don't blame you if you don't want to follow my process. Obviously, if you'd rather follow a professional one, that's recommended. I'm sad this didn't work out. I'm probably not going to finish all of this, but I'll eat some of it just so it all doesn't go to waste. I mean, the experience wasn't a total loss. At least I learned not to trust myself to set my smoker and leave home although I might do that again still. But if you watch this video, I really appreciate you, even if this didn't give you any knowledge or entertainment. Next video is definitely gonna be better. Thank you all for watching, be blessed, and I'll see you next time. It's like if you injected a charcoal briquette with bacon flavor and then covered it in barbecue sauce. Pretty good.